That was the right way. Right way. Right way from there, Tony. Yeah, yeah, we don't kill quick. Let's get back signed on. Get back signed on, people. My favorite clash to watch. I actually, I, to be honest, I cannot really tell you because I, I watched a few, but I more listened to clashes than I was watching them. You know, mm -hmm. so probably watching uh, must be a just because of the moment. Um, it was a world clash in Jamaica where Black Hat won, and. Panda was just like crazy at me laughing, like jumping on, like falling on the um, turntables and stuff. So probably that's like one I watched a lot on YouTube and yeah, probably that one. So what about listening? Uh, listening, um, I listen like like a lot of Kilimanjaro clashes. That's like my favorite sound. and. Um, yeah, I would say probably uh, Adi Sanjaro. <laughs> I think this like one of the clashes of even and it had 99s, 2000. It was a clash in New York with, with firelings. That was crazy too. But yeah, there's like let's say Adi Sanjaro, Jaro and Adis. Yeah. Um, well, I cannot really mm, only mention one. I mean, probably the first big moment was our first clash that we had and won was in 2001 um, in Cologne against Sentinel, Badadop and another song. Then I have to mention the rhythm clash because that's like when I when we clashed against like Chupa, which is my idol, and with One Love and, and Freddy, and they just all came back from World Clash in New York, and I think One Love and Chupa were in the final, or in the tune for tune, and two weeks later we had a clash in, in Munich, the rhythm clash, and yeah, actually I, I stand up against my own idol, so to speak, that was crazy, and then definitely um, in Antigua, when we clashed against Addis, but with Babyface, Danny Dread, yeah. with Matterhorn, that was like, yeah, I mean, I would say those were like the biggest moments for me. Yeah. No man is a island! No man is a island! No, like, are there so many? One, I, it sounds a little rough, but I remember Jaro was clashing Katarok. Um, and you know, Katarok and, and, and Trooper said, Yo, people, Katarok is a disease. You go to optician and you laser it, you know, you burn it off. If you call yourself after this disease, you better call yourself AIDS because AIDS kill people. Uh, and you know, it had me like, Yeah, you know, this like, yeah. But there are, there are a few, and like I said, there are a few funny speeches and but this was one of my, it had me like dying, man. When I heard it, Chupa was wicked. Yeah. Um, I think you have to have a certain aura or presence on, 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 on stage. It's like something you cannot train. You, you know, like, it's either you have it or you don't. And yeah, I mean, you have to be spontaneous, you have to be swift and, and um, yeah, you, you have to be able to run jokes or be spontaneous and, yeah, but like I say, you have to have this kind of charisma on stage that people actually just see you and they're really listening what you're saying, like they pay attention, because a lot of times you have MCs and they just fly over the people head and nobody really pay attention to really listen what you say. I think it's, it's yeah, something is either like you have it or you don't, you know? Mm -hmm. uh. uh, yeah, I would, even though like 
Chupa killed himself a lot of times, but for me, Ricky Chupa is like the, the ultimate because like he gives you history. He busts so many artists like because back in the days, sound system were like a promo tool, not like nowadays you have YouTube and nobody use sound system to promote their songs like the artists. Um, so Chupa had everything, aggressiveness, um, he was funny, he, he had the history, the legacy, the, this, yeah, so I, I would say Chupa definitely. Yeah. Your love and passion for it. Simple. Don't do it because you think you can make money or you can be a DJ booked and fuck bitches. And you know, like, if that is your motivation, that's wrong. Like, like, nah, first thing is you have to have this love and this passion for the music and for it. That's, that's, that's the main thing. Anything else doesn't make sense. Yeah, and you could leave it alone, I think. Yeah, if it's like a hobby or something. It's either you're really into it, you love it, and yeah. Only one dub? I, I always say it must be Joseph Hill. Um, I don't even know the original name uh, from the original song. Sha la 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 Yes, I know, because of this like for me, I guess. But they are, I, we have so much like, oof, and we still voicing though, and yeah. No, I love, like, I, for, like as a Clash fan, I swear, like, if I would not play any sound and I'm just a consumer, I would love my song just for the dubs too, like, I swear, <laughs> I would just love it because so many nice dubs. Ah, we just voiced like a nice um, Christopher Ellis and Barris. It's also like, oof, crazy. We have some nice Barris dubs too, like what you have, didn't heard here anywhere before. And but yeah, Barris. But Joseph Phil, yeah. Mm. Ah. But I have to go back to my to the classical gyro dubs. Yeah, like yeah. but I don't know like it's too too many but what like I can't say <laughs> I can't say Jaro, probably the reason. I don't know. Next. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, even though it's entertainment, but it's still competition, you know what I mean? So, um, sometimes Clash is not funny at all, like, as a, you know, like, as a, how to say, as somebody who is involved, is like really competitive, it's no fun, or a, like football game, you know, like you're watching a, Champions League game, it's entertainment, but for those people who are on the field, it's more than, it's not, they're doing it for entertainment, they're doing it because they're, they're damn serious about it, and, ah, what's the funniest thing, I, I, I can't say, I had, like, we had some funny moments, probably, like, when we had, when we clashed Addis with Babyface in New York, the first time, I am, um, we gave him a cassette from uh, the Clash Jaro and Addis and I handed it to him and I, I say, you should, you know, like, listen back and this is how the good Addis was and, and played a Kobo tea or something and the whole place were laughing and, but I can't, really, I can't really say what was the funniest thing. I can't, as a, people have to say that, you know, like, I can't. I can't say. Listen, listening what they're saying and try to find like weak arguments or songs 
that where you know, all right, I can kill it with or um, make people laugh with counteracting or playing it top out of your box or you know like having a speech and you, know, you have to pay attention what the MC is saying. That's why. Um, like you should really be able to listen what the other MC is saying and, and what kind of songs they're playing. Otherwise, it's um, yeah, doesn't make sense. You know, like people play with um, playlists and stuff, like their rounds and thing. But it's like doesn't make any sense for me because like you always have to be able to counteract or interact. Like you know, uh, answer what your opponent was playing. And you don't know what he's playing before, so making a playlist. Uh, doesn't really make sense like that. Okay, so, you never done a uh, second round and third round playlist? Um, or just a structure? A, more or less a structure. One time actually we, we did it and it like was a second round and we were not able to kind of yeah, yeah. switch it yeah. and th that's what I mean, like don't I could just uh, don't do it because like, be able to switch and be spontaneous and just look um, at the moment and, and, and how the crowd is reacting or what your opponent is saying or playing but that's how you should actually well you should, yeah structure is good but in the end of the day anything can happen and once you kind of focus on that it's too late like then you're not be able to switch that that's like the worst thing can happen you know um, well, this this uh, when people take it too personal, well, I caught myself too, like you know, taking it very personal. But that's like, yeah, this is like, and for me, the worst thing is to clash in front of a crowd who don't know actually what you're doing or what you're saying or don't understand like what it is about you know and which we unfortunately have like in Europe a lot you know like especially like big or, or festival clashes it's like I, I hate that because that's like no competition for me mm -hmm. it's like I want to be with experts and yeah so that's that's for me or if you have a host who's um, you know like fucking up the nah this is but other than that, ooh, it's, I love it. It's, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, no. Now, Squinchy was great, but for me, um, Squinchy would not been so good if he wouldn't have without Mark. Like his, you know, and what Chupa could do it by himself, you know, and but but Squinchy alone would I never be able to do what he without without Mark DJ Mark so for me Trooper definitely can, okay uh, can I ask you extra question mm. why 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 this why this relationship was so special because I I've heard it from many people that Squinjo without Mark would be mm, uh, but I, no, I, I can didn't explain it's similar, it's similar like Panzer and me uh -huh. um, like Rhythm wise and tune wise and you know Panzer as a selector he have the you know know all the rhythms and and have certain ideas you know where this song the original comes from and so Panzer was voicing most of our dubs Squinchy never voiced any dubs like it was Mark doing this so Mark was doing the work and Squinchy just kind of you know performed it in a way and so. That's why I think the, the, the combination is just like Panzer and me, but Chuba was like by himself, you know, he will go to the artist's voice, he will pick the rhythm, he will write it, he will, so he's doing all by himself. So that's why I think, um, yeah, Squinchy would have, wouldn't have been where he was without Mark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.